Hello everyone, I am here to demonstrate both external and internal features of heart. So here the organ which is present in my ha hand is heart and heart it is present in the middle mediastinum of thoracic cavity enclosed in a covering called as pericardium. So we can see the cut open covering here. This is pericardium of the heart which is covering the heart. Let us see the chambers of heart it contains four chambers so the right atrium so the one which is seen little bit towards the anterior side this one is the right atrium and here is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle and the one which is projecting like a small pinna is the left atrium most of the left atrium is present on the posterior aspect of the heart and right atrium is present posterior as well as on the lateral side of the heart. So this is the right atrium of the heart. So these are the four chambers of heart. Externally heart presents apex. So this conical projection what you are seeing between the two fingers this is the apex of the heart. The apex is made of left ventricle. So here is the left ventricle which makes the apex of the heart. And this apex it is directed towards the left and in living in, uh, uh, in situ inside the body it is present in the fifth intercostal space approximately 9 centimeters away from the midline. So that is that is a mid sternal line. So this is the apex of the heart. Next base, base is otherwise called as posterior surface of the heart. Base is formed by two atria. So what is there in the palm? This surface is the base. So this is the base of the heart which is mainly formed by the right atrium and left atrium. Left atrium makes two thirds of the base and one third of the base is formed by the right atrium of the heart. So this posterior surface is the base. Then heart has got four borders, upper border, so here is this is the upper border, right border, right border is along the right atrium, then inferior border and left border. These are the borders which are not clearly demarcated but still we can say. So the upper border is slightly oblique and it is mainly formed by two atria. It is located behind these great vessels. You are seeing this is the arch of iota and this is the pulmonary trunk. Behind the great vessels it is formed by the upper border of the heart. Upper border is formed by both right and left atria. And it is slightly oblique and uh, it is mainly formed by the left atrium. Ascending iota and pulmonary trunks present anterior to the upper border. Next about the right border. The right border corresponds to the right atrium. So see here this is the right border where right atrium is present. So this is the right atrium, this is the right border of the heart. There are two openings where I am probing into. This is the superior vena cable opening. Here is the superior vena cable opening, opening into the right atrium. And this opening, this large one is the inferior vena cable opening. So the right border extends between both superior and inferior vena cava. Inferior border of the heart, inferior border is an acute margin which is a sharp border present along the inferior side of the heart where it separates the anterior surface from the inferior surface. Anterior surface is otherwise called as sternocostal surface, inferior surface is otherwise called as diaphragmatic surface. Left border of the heart. Left border it is an obtuse margin. It is uh, separates the sternocostal surface that is the anterior surface from the left surface. It uh, descends obliquely and it is formed by the left atrium. So I will show you all this is the left atrium. This is the left auricle. This is the left auricle. These are the op pulmonary veins opening into the left atrium. So this forms the left border of the heart. It is rounded 
and mainly formed by the left uh, atrium and left ventricle as well. So, you can see the left ventricle which forms the major part of left border of the heart. Then the heart has got three surfaces. I already said about the anterior surface. The anterior surface is otherwise called sternocostal surface because it is related to sternum and ribs anteriorly. And left surface, so this is the left surface of the heart which is mainly formed by the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle and by the left atrium as well. Then diaphragmatic surface, this is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart which is the inferior surface which rests over the central tendon of diaphragm. So that is the reason it is called diaphragmatic surface of heart. So inferior surface is diaphragmatic surface of heart. So when you hold in anatomical position, the apex should be between this middle and the index finger. This is the apex and anterior surface or sternocostal surface should be on the anterior side, right, right atrium, left surface on the left side and inferior diaphragmatic surface is in your fingers and posteriorly the posterior surface or the base of the heart should be in your palm. So, this is how we hold in the left hand in anatomical position. The grooves of the heart, coronary sulcus and atrioventricular sulcus. So, you can see here this is the right atrium and right ventricle. The sulcus between them, the groove between them is called as atrioventricular sulcus or right coronary sulcus. So, coronary sulcus it is having anterior and posterior parts. So, what you are seeing here I am showing is the anterior part of the coronary sulcus and if you trace down it runs on the inferior side between the diaphragmatic and posterior surface. So, this is the posterior part of coronary sulcus. So, the right side the coronary sulcus contains right coronary artery, right coronary artery this is the right coronary artery present in the right coronary sulcus. Along with it a vein is present which is called as small cardiac vein and on the left side left coronary sulcus is between the left atrium and the pulmonary trunk. This is the left coronary sulcus. So the vessels present in the forceps are the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery divides into circumflex artery and also it continues as circumflex artery continues posteriorly and the other artery is the anterior descending artery. Along with these arteries we also have got great cardiac vein present in this. Posterior part of the coronary sulcus that is the left coronary sulcus shows a dilatation dilated vein which is called as coronary sinus. So, posterior part of left coronary sulcus contains coronary sinus. Next about the crux of the heart, the crux is the point here which is the meeting point of the two between the two ventricles inferiorly. This is called as posterior interventricular groove and the two atria meets here and atrioventricular groove. So, this T like this point of meeting between the atrioventricular groove and interventricular groove on the inferior side this point is called as crux of the heart. Let us see about the other sulci, anterior interventricular sulcus as the name suggests we can see anteriorly here which is running obliquely separating the left ventricle from the right ventricle. This is the anterior interventricular sulcus. The contents of anterior interventricular sulcus are left anterior descending artery or otherwise called anterior interventricular artery. So, this one is the left anterior descending artery which is present in the anti, uh, interventricular groove, anterior interventricular groove. This one is the branch of left coronary artery and also along with this we have got the great cardiac vein which is the content of the anterior interventricular sulcus. Posterior interventricular sulcus, this is the posterior interventricular sulcus. So, this posterior interventricular sulcus contains posterior interventricular artery and middle cardiac vein. Remember 
posterior interventricular artery and middle cardiac veins are the contents of posterior interventricular groove which separates the two right and left ventricles on the inferior side.